So how much do you need to spend to get a genuinely good projector? Today on The Hookup, I've got eight of Amazon's best-selling projectors in the $100 to $200 price range. I'm gonna put them up head-to-head -head against each other, a $700 projector from BenQ, and the best projector from my sub $100 projector video to show you why these three projectors from Nexigo, Vabiz, and Yabber stand out from the rest and help you pick out the one that's right for you. In my last video, I figured out that the listings for these cheap LED projectors are misleading at best and at worst, a total lie. For that reason, the only spec that I'm gonna trust from the listings is their native resolution, which is 1080p for every projector in this video. And for the rest of the stats, I'm just gonna test them out myself so we can actually get some standardization between brands and listings. In fact, I'm gonna divide this video up into three sections. The first section will be everything that I can quantitatively measure, and that's things like brightness, fan noise, input lag, and focus uniformity. And then in the second section, it's gonna be more of a subjective test where I put each projector head to head with one another in a single elimination showdown for things like color accuracy, contrast, vibrance, and overall viewing experience. After that, I'll break down my top three picks, look at their software and other features, and help you decide which one is best for you. Let's start out with the measurements for brightness. All the projectors in this price range are LED projectors, meaning they use high power LEDs as their light source instead of a high intensity discharge bulb like you'd find in a more traditional projector. The upside of an LED light source is that it's cheaper to produce and it should last tens of thousands of hours compared to the three to 5,000 hours of an HID bulb. But it comes with a trade-off of significantly lower brightness. The standard measurement for projector brightness is called ANSI lumens, and to calculate it, you project a pure white screen and then divide it up into nine sections. Using a lux meter, you measure the light output at the center of each of those nine sections and then average those numbers and multiply that by the screen size in square meters. By my measurements, the Nexigo PJ20 was the brightest with 475 ANSI lumens, which is actually 125 more than they advertised, while the Vabiz and Vivibrite also did really well with 417 and 383 ANSI lumens respectively, which while decent was significantly lower than the 600 ANSI lumens that they advertised on their Amazon listing. From what I could tell, it seemed like 300 ANSI lumens was a sweet spot for viewing in a mostly dark room, and anything less than that seemed too dim to be a real option. One thing that I haven't seen advertised on any of these pages, but turns out to be pretty important, is the brightness uniformity. Every single projector that I tested had the highest brightness measurement in the exact middle of the screen, and it had the lowest measurement in one of the four corners. I called this difference their brightness deviation, and I calculated it by taking the lux reading from the brightest section, subtracting the lux reading from the dimmest section, and then dividing that number by the average lux. Lower numbers are better in this case, and the Yabber V10 had the lowest deviation at 46%, followed by the Nexigo with 51%. The worst performer was the Hawu that had over three times less brightness in the upper right hand corner than it did in the center. Tangentially related to brightness is the fan noise of these projectors. Generally speaking, as a projector's light source gets brighter, the LED gets hotter and therefore needs more cooling. I used a decibel metering app to take a standard measurement from 18 inches away from the back of the projector and found that the DB Power and the Hawu projectors were the quietest in this lineup at 41 decibels. The Vabiz and Vivibrite were by far the loudest at 49 decibels. And a notable finisher in all these tests was the Nexigo PJ20, which was the brightest projector with the second best uniformity, and it was also the third quietest at just 43 decibels. So how do these measurements compare to an HID bulb projector from a big name brand? I repeated all these tests with my $700 BenQ TH671ST, and expectedly it did significantly better in every single category with 2,568 measured ANSI lumens, 47% brightness deviation, and it was the quietest of all the projectors at just 39 decibels. Again, the TH671ST costs around $700, so it's definitely not a competitor for these mid-range LED projectors, but I did calculate the cost per lumen stat that seemed pretty interesting to me, which was just 27 cents per lumen for the BenQ, but 42 cents for the Nexigo, and 39 cents for the Vabiz. The next measurement I took was input lag, which is basically how long the projector takes to process an incoming video signal and then send it out to the LCD to be projected. If you're planning on playing video games on your projector, this is an extremely important stat because things like jumping and aiming are almost impossible to do with a high input lag. 
To test this, I sent a time-coded 60 frames per second video through an HDMI splitter, and then I filmed the results at 120 frames per second. On the top is my LG C9 OLED TV set to gaming mode, which has a well-known and well-tested input lag of 13.5 milliseconds. Since every single sent out by the HDMI splitter is in sync, we can measure the input lag by figuring out how many frames behind each projector is compared to the TV. The best performers in this category were the Nexigo, Vivibrite, DB Power, and Hawu, which were just one frame behind the TV. One frame equates to about 17 milliseconds, meaning these projectors have about 30 milliseconds of total input lag, which is completely acceptable for playing video games. The Vabiz was slightly more than that at 47 milliseconds, or two frames behind the TV, while the Yabber V10 was a staggering seven frames behind the TV, which equates to 130 milliseconds of input lag, which is way too much to play most video games. Also, just for reference, my $700 BenQ projector consistently showed the same frame as the LG OLED, which matches its 16 millisecond advertised input lag and its branding as a gaming projector. The last measurement, which I guess is somewhat subjective, is focus uniformity. Cheap lenses sometimes struggle to keep the whole image in focus, so when the middle is in focus, the corners are blurry and vice versa. To test this, I made a video with identical text in the middle and each corner, and then I adjusted the focus for a crisp image in the middle and gave each of the four corners a score from 1 to 10, 1 being completely out of focus and 10 being the same clarity as the middle text. The Yabber V10 did the best in this category with an average score of 9.25, but the Vabiz and EasyCast also did well. As a comparison, the focus uniformity on my $700 BenQ was almost perfect with a 9.75 average score. At this point, I had collected a bunch of data and the Nexigo PJ20 seemed to be the front runner, but I hadn't actually watched any video on the projectors yet. So I set up each projector using my 120 inch Vivid Storm ambient light rejecting screen, shut the blinds and turned off the lights. I didn't want a completely dark room since that's not really realistic for most people, but it was definitely dim enough to watch a movie. I then filmed the screen using my Sony A6600 on manual mode so each projector's relative brightness could still be seen. What you're about to see is a head-to-head -head comparison between these projectors and a reference video at the bottom. To determine the winner of each round, I evaluated things like color accuracy, contrast, vibrance, and overall viewing experience. I put the $58 Vixing from my previous video up against the $119 Hawu, and even though the Hawu had a 1080p native resolution and higher brightness, it lacked contrast and ultimately I thought the Vixing delivered a slightly better overall experience. Next, the $58 Vixing went up against the $135 EasyCast H3, and this round was slightly more difficult to judge because the EasyCast failed to play back the video correctly. Because of the glitching and drop frames, the EasyCast ended up speeding up the video by roughly 5%, meaning I couldn't easily do a side-by-side -side comparison of each scene. From what I could tell, the EasyCast wasn't quite as good as the Vixing, and it definitely lost points for not being able to properly play back a 1080p MP4 file. So the Vixing moved on again. In the next round, the $58 Vixing went up against the $149 DB Power, and it was no contest. The DB Power was the first of these mid-range projectors that actually felt like it was in a different league. The higher brightness and better color accuracy made it the clear pick between the two, which probably makes sense considering it costs almost three times as much. On to the next round where the DB Power faced the $159 Vivibrite. This matchup was the first round when I started to consider that these projectors could actually be a legitimate option for a home theater on a budget. Not only was the Vivibrite nice and bright, but it had good color accuracy, vibrance, and contrast, and it easily moved on to the next round to face the Vabiz. And I wasn't exactly sure where to put the Vabiz in this competition, since it's listed for $299. But with a $30 discount and 40% off coupon, it's only $161 as of this video release. On the outside, the Vivibrite and the Vabiz look almost identical. And upon further investigation, I found out that they're actually made by the same parent company. The Vabiz seems like it might just be an upgraded version of the Vivibrite, and that came through in the testing. All the things that made the Vivibrite the winner in the previous round, like brightness, vibrance, and color accuracy, were improved on the Vabiz, and the Vabiz easily won this round. Next, the Vabiz was up against the $189 Weemius W1, and while I thought the Weemius did decently, it wasn't nearly as bright or crisp as the Vabiz, and it was a little too blue across all the scenes. The Weemius W1 definitely isn't a bad projector, and if you didn't have anything else to compare it to, you'd probably be happy with its performance. But compared side by side with the Vabiz, it didn't stand a chance, and the Vabiz easily moved on again. Next to go was the Nexigo, which based on my earlier testing seemed like it was going to be the best projector. For $199, you get a quiet fan, motorized focus, and high brightness. But as you can see, the image just isn't quite as good as the Vabiz. 
The next goat is a little bit too blue and it lacks contrast compared to the Vabiz. Interestingly, the part of the video that has a white dot in the middle looks a bit brighter on the Vabiz, even though the Nexigo's center region brightness was 497 lux compared to 456 on the Vabiz. I probably watched this round 30 times, but in the end, I still have to give the win to the Vabiz here. And if the Nexigo couldn't take out the Vabiz, I did not have high hopes for the $199 Yabber V10. And while there were a few parts in the video that I thought the Yabber did well, like the contrast in the bubbles on the all black screen, I thought the Yabber was overall too blue compared to the reference video, and in the scenes with a bunch of colors, the Yabber was really washed out compared to the vibrant colors on the Vabiz. And just for reference, while I put up the final rankings for this category that I called viewing experience, here is that number one Vabiz projector versus my $700 BenQ projector. The horizontal lines on the BenQ are from filming and aren't visible in person, but you can tell just how much brighter the BenQ is than the Vabiz. However, if you look at color accuracy, the Vabiz is actually significantly closer to the reference video than the BenQ. Okay, so all said and done, I have three recommendations, and all of them are pretty good, but none of them are perfect. Starting with the most obvious, at $161, the Vabiz is inexpensive, has great picture quality, relatively low input lag, and great brightness. It has a built-in retractable foot for positioning the image and manual tilt keystoning, which basically means that this dial on the back physically tilts a lens inside the projector to change the vertical keystone of the image. The Vabiz has two main weaknesses. First, the software on it kind of sucks, and it reminds me of the cheap interface on the sub $100 projectors. iOS mirroring works, but you have to connect to the projector's hotspot to enable it, which means whatever media you're going to stream is going to have to go over the cellular network. The Vabiz also had the least compatibility for file types when using a USB drive, and it wasn't able to decode the audio on some of the Dolby test clips that I was using. However, if you're planning on using the Vabiz with its HDMI ports, then the software that it uses doesn't matter. But the second and biggest weakness is the fan, which is obnoxiously loud. If I were going to use this projector, I would want to be as far away from it as possible, which is hard to do since the distance from the projector to the screen is about the same distance that most people would want to sit to watch a 100 inch screen. You could ceiling mount it, which would be easy enough using the mounting holes on the bottom, but you might also want to build some kind of enclosure to block out some of the noise. I'd originally thought about trying to replace the fan with something quieter, but when I took it apart, it's not a standard size or shape, so I don't think that's an option. Again, if you're planning on hooking up your projector to a fire stick or a game console and fan noise isn't a deal breaker for you, then the Vabiz is definitely my top recommendation as far as brightness and picture quality. But if the fan noise is going to ruin your viewing experience, then the Nexigo is the next best option. Not only does it have quiet fans, high brightness, and low input lag, but the motorized focus on the remote is a nice touch. The software on the Nexigo is more polished than the Vob is, and it does have the ability to join your Wi-Fi network for direct testing to the projector from Windows, iOS, or Android. USB playback of video also works great, and it was one of the few projectors that could decode Dolby surround sound audio. And while you probably still want to hook up some external speakers to the audio out port for the best viewing experience, the Nexigo's internal speakers are very loud. And overall, the Nexigo is the projector that I would recommend to most people. The image quality isn't quite as good as the Vob is, but it's still very good, and the better software and much quieter fan make it my pick for an all-around good projector that can handle almost anything that you throw at it. And my last recommendation is the Yabber V10, which isn't the brightest, doesn't have the best picture quality and has horrendous input lag, but it has a few key features that set it apart from the rest. First and most importantly, it has four point keystoning, which is something typically only found in much more expensive projectors. This allows you to place your projector offset from the screen and then adjust the picture to fit perfectly on the screen without any distortion. Lots of people in the comment section of my last video asked which projector they should buy for projecting art onto walls for painting. And the Yabber V10 is perfect for that application due to its advanced software keystoning. In addition to that, the Yabber can play a ton of different file types for images and videos, and even has support for viewing PowerPoint presentations, Word documents, and Excel spreadsheets directly from a USB drive. It also has the best interface for streaming video from phones, and just has the best and most responsive software overall. You shouldn't get the Yabber V10 for playing video games because of the terrible input lag, but for any other situation where keystoning might be necessary, the Yabber is by far the best option. The Yabber does have one other limitation that you should know about, and that's that for some reason they didn't include any mounting holes or adjustments for the feet. So in my tests, I always had to prop it up with some Legos or a book. I would have loved to see at least a tripod mount on the bottom, which would have made it an even better option for artists. There's links down in the descriptions for all the projectors that I tested in this video, and if you appreciate the time, effort, and money that it takes to put a review like this together, then consider using those links because I get a small portion of the sale at no cost to you. If you have additional questions about projectors, go ahead and leave a comment and I will try to answer it as best as I can. 
Thank you so much to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.